Please join me in a pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting, uh, September 25th, 2017. Uh, we'll open up with public comment period. Is there anybody from the public wishing to speak? Please state your name, address. Good evening, Mary Louise Woolsey, 148 Little River Road. I'm here to request an appointment uh, with you kind people next week. Uh, the topic would be um, re a discussion on the 2018 Public Works budget um, suggestions and a little discussion. So I will appreciate the opportunity to come and speak with you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you. No, no, I didn't say okay to meet it. We don't respond to public comment, remember. So thank you for your public comment. Well, do you want me to send you an email or how do you want me to communicate with the board? Same as always. Email does it. Email. Okay. I will be happy to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else in the public wishing to be heard? Seeing none, we will move on. Announcements and community calendar. I have nothing, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Mr. Bartle. Just remember, schools open, drive safely. Mr. Griffin. Yeah, I hope everyone's enjoying uh, Indian summer. Mr. Bean. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the Hampton Police Department um, uh, laid to rest one of their own in a magnificent fashion. Our, our uh, hearts and uh, sympathies and our respect to that uh, that's a young lady and that fine organization. Uh, Walter Kivlin called today. Uh, Mr. Welch, you wanted me to pass on uh, what a fabulous job that you're doing. I'm doing so now, let it duly be noted. Uh, I'd like to say uh, um, hello to my good friend Steve Asieri, uh, a retired Public Works uh, employee that uh, spent a career here in the town of Hampton. Hope he's enjoying the summer. The water has been magnificent. Uh, the waves have been magnificent. And uh, if you're not getting down there, you're losing out. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Ditto on all the weather stuff. It's beautiful. It's like summer at the beach. It's, I don't know, it's nice. Maybe it'll stay all year. Doubt it. <laughs> Consent agenda. Hampton Cemetery Deeds, Alan C. Parson, Nancy C. O'Malley Estate. So moved. Second. All in favor? <clears throat> Unanimous. Appointments. Chris Jacobs and Jen Hale, DPW Director and DPW Deputy Director, Departmental Update. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Well, it's good to see you guys yeah. all along. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Director, thank you. Good. Uh, good evening. Um, first, I was typing our, our quarterly report out and said, uh, you know, you could be funny and say we haven't been that busy, but in fact, the truth is, we've been busy. Uh, some of uh, this report is uh, metrics, uh, some of it um, is more of a story than, if you will, just pure metrics. I only want to go a couple pages and then you can read there. Whenever you're ready. All right, thanks. Um, solid waste disposal, we've been tracking that. Um, the tonnage is up, um, same point, at end of August over last year, we're up 82 tons. Um, negative side of that is recycling, we're down 29 tons. Um, so the recycling rate has uh, dropped below 30%. Um, I'm not alarmed by that. It typically rises again as um, uh, there's less beach crowd and more just residents thrown away. So it's hovering just below 30%. Um, uh, another major concern is the wastewater treatment plant. We've disposed of or had to dispose of 100 more wet tons of sludge uh, through this same point. Um, end of August this year, 
uh, due to a number of factors. One, um, the Epping Wastewater Treatment Facility can no longer accept sludge. Um, so a lot of those vehicles have been traveling down here. It's increased revenue for the town. But as you can see, um, we've to, year to date, uh, 1,338,000,000 gallons of septic sludge. Um, same period last year, only 964, 964,000. So we're up 374,000 gallons of sludge. Um, as I say, it does re represent additional revenue to the town, but um, we keep bouncing at, uh, I have an upper operational limit BOD loading, and um, it, we may get down to the point where we actually start turning people away, that we only accept so much per. But we keep monitoring it literally every day, and. Um, to date, it hasn't been an issue. Uh, driveway permits, uh, 40 as of uh, the end of uh, August, but uh, compared to 46 of all of last year. So I do want to just, uh, this is uh, on me, the 46 is through the same reporting period same reporting of period. 2016. Okay. So you're comparing apples to apples. Thank you. Uh, 50 excavation permits versus 74. Uh, 39 sewer connection permits compared to 40 of all of 16. Where we're seeing the marked increases, uh, we never really tracked this before, was uh, sewer disconnection permits, 10 uh, compared to 5 in the previous year. We're seeing a number of, and I believe that would be the same correlating factor through the building department, a number of teardowns and then uh, reconstructions. So we never really tracked those in the past because um, what we've seen an increase in that particular uh, metric, so um, we started tracking it because um, one of the concerns is there's always, uh, sometimes there's a delay, one season delay to when these people reconnect. So it um, used to be people disconnected one week and reconnected the following week, but that isn't what is occurring anymore. I uh, just want to give you a heads update. We are still continuing to test, oh, 11 uh, planning board applications currently uh, through the plan review committee. Uh, Tide Mill Creek, we are still testing. Uh, we test, uh, if not once a week, it's, it works out to about every five days where we test. June, we had a pretty wild month. We went up to 2419, which is really high count. Uh, uh, people were thinking that we had another leak, but the next day the count right, went right down to five. So I don't know what got dumped into Tide Mill Creek, but it passed literally right through and went out to sea. Um, the June results are, uh, sorry, the July results, I know it says June twice, the July results are more atypical in that our highest was a 27.8 and our lowest was 6.2. Most of them range in that uh, particular uh, area. We've had a number of personnel changes on top of being really busy. Uh, Teresa McGinnis retired after 37 years. And we have promoted Marie Hall into that, um, her vacated ops coordinator position. Uh, Toby Eldridge retired uh, from the, working at the transfer station after 28 years. Don, Dan Coffin was promoted to fill Toby's position. And Peter Reed was promoted from highway to fill the scale house waymaster's position. Uh, Gino Berthamu uh, resigned during the summer. He moved to Florida. Uh, we hired Jacob Buell to fill his position, and um, because of the transfers over to uh, people moving over to the transfer station, we hired Bill Murray to fill that vacate, uh, Peter Reed's vacated position in highway. And our part-time vehicle mechanic, Paul McCormick, uh, got done with us on uh, the 12th of this month. Um, he's looking for lighter work, not as physically demanding. And tomorrow is the last working day for Bob DeRocher, our equipment operator at the transfer station. He's been with us uh, 28 years. Um, I want to wish him, he, Teresa, and Toby uh, good, good efforts or good endeavors in their retirements. Uh, they've all earned it and, and earned it really well. Um, I've also been verbally notified, and I don't consider this official until I have some paperwork, but I have two employees that are going to retire before the end of the year, uh, 20 year two 20-year employees and a, uh, another 30-year employee in the spring. Uh, last year, we, uh, with respect to the landfill perimeter fencing, 
Uh, we get an annual report from an outside vendor that we hire to look at the landfill, you know, write us a report for the state. They also monitor the groundwater. One of the things that we continually got critiqued on is that we had four wheelers running in and around the landfill. Uh, we've uh, managed to uh, extend uh, fencing around the perimeter of the landfill now, and that can no longer occur. Um, brush grinding was done earlier in the summer. Um, they chipped uh, almost 2,300 cubic yards of chips. Half of it's been hauled out and compost. Uh, that contract was also executed, and um, they've taken all of the previous year's compost out and left, and in this contract, we specified a cubic yards of material that they had to leave. In the past, it was leave some at your convenience. This time, the contract dictated 160 cubic yards, and they left that right there for the residents all year long to remove. Matter of fact, I think they left a little, a lot more than 160 cubic yards. So it's been there all summer for the residents to use, which has been good. Um, tree warden. To date, I've had 33 uh, trees removed and another 17 are scheduled to be removed. Uh, Urban uh, Tree Service, my last conversation with them last week is they were going to be in town these first three or four days of the week. Um, the other trees that are going to be removed, and I bring this up because people want to know what's happening, uh, trees on Hayden Circle, North Shore Road, Wild Rose Lane, and over on Burgundy Drive. And I would ask that if people in the, who observe these trees, probably a lot closer than we do, if they suspect a tree needs attention, please call the office, ask for me, and I'll make a point to go out and look. Why don't you go ahead, because you're running the paving. All righty. So uh, as you know, we broke up the paving into sort of a spring and a fall paving uh, plan. This spring, we worked with a GMI asphalt to resurface um, High Street from Mill Pond Lane to Route 1A. Uh, with that, we repaired and replaced the sidewalk along the side. Acorn got paved, Cusack Road, the lower end of it. Uh, and all that work was done uh, to make way for the 2017 work, which is ongoing, uh, not as we speak, but as of till probably about 4 o'clock this afternoon, and will continue for about the next week and a half. Uh, we're working with Brox Industries, uh, to resurface Merrill Industrial Drive, uh, what we're calling Town Road, which is a small road next to the water tower off of Mill Road. Uh, all of Drake Side Road will be paved top to bottom. A uh, portion of Woodland Road from uh, Tide Mill Road down to the town line. And then uh, Hard Arts Way. Um, <clears throat> we've been working, or we had worked with Northern New England Field Services in July to remove the railroad abutments. That is complete. It has been... Uh, used. We've heard a lot of great things uh, about uh, how it's opened up the roadway and taken out uh, the big dip in the road. And so by the end of next week, we're hoping to have that all paved. Um, currently in the schedule, they are finishing the milling of Woodland Road right now. Uh, they'll go out to Merrill Industrial Drive from there. And starting tomorrow, everything will start getting its binder courses down. So they'll do all the binder, then come back and do the top course. Um, in the office, uh, James Hafey has been working with uh, People GIS to implement our asset management software. Uh, this was done with uh, the funding that was provided for us for the Clean Water uh, State Revolving Fund uh, loan reimbursement. Uh, we've provided for them over 12,000 documents uh, to match to our parcel lines and all our sewer manhole drainage, all our inventories. Um, we'll be working with them as they work with uh, Paul Paquette and our IT people, uh, as well as Ed up in assessing, to link everything so that we're all on one database. Um, once this is done, we'll get a public mapping site, and Public Works will start its training on how to use the asset management uh, software and hopefully get it uh, out into the field. Other things that have been keeping us busy include um, working with the neighbors uh, in the areas of Green and Gentian, as well as the west side of Ashworth. Uh, as you all are aware, we did have neighborhood meetings with each of those groups. Uh, the ones for Green Street and Gentian were done, I believe, back in July. Uh, we have uh, authorized Swamp to move forward to restore those natural um, 
channels, I think is the best word to use it, to help alleviate some of the flooding that's going on there currently. Um, Swamp will be submitting the emergency permit, and upon receipt of that permit in our hand, uh, that work will start. We also, in conjunction for both neighborhoods that have uh, experienced flooding, uh, as you guys are also aware, the parking ordinance was changed, and this is something to provide places for people to park during the high tide and storm events. Uh, residents can go get the emergency permit. We also are implementing a call all similar to what you would get if you signed up through the website um, to find out if trust schedule had changed or any important announcements. We now will have one for any of the tides that are greater than 10.0 or state storm alerts. Um, trying to again help uh, work with these residents as we um, prepare a warrant article and wait to determine uh, what we can do to find out what the final solutions can be uh, in these two areas. Do uh, you want to go back to Mill Pond, Dan? Sure. Um, we've been continuing to work with all the abutters um, for the Mill Pond Dam. As you know, there, that was uh, work that was initiated through a petition war warrant article, and we've basically taken the petitioners and, and turned it into a, a working group. Um, Candy Stelmack, uh, Mike, Ed Mike Edgar, and um, others, the Grondins that live uh, to the right of it. And we've even reached out to it's the Shaw family mm -hmm. out front and now included them in the, in the group. Um, we last met with them uh, mid-September. Uh, our agreement with PAR is that they're, they're going to get the project out this month, uh, coming up in October, uh, with a bid opening about the 1st of November so that we can determine if there are sufficient funds remaining in that Warren article. Um, we've, uh, in discussions with the group, uh, basically asked them if, if there is a shortage, uh, we'd like you to... Uh, as the petitioners to come forth with that if in fact there is a shortage. But we're not jumping to conclusions at this point. Ice Pond Dam um, is actually going to go forward. That was a design that was done a while ago. Um, one of the reasons for working with the contractor that was selected on Drake Side Road is um, we requested about six of the granite pieces that were on uh, Drake Side Road be delivered over by Ice Pond Dam. He actually delivered about, I think, eight or ten. Um, and we have a, we've worked out a plan and an agreement that's going to be backed and paid for by the Conservation Commission to get that work done. I have to draw up a recommendation and I have to bring it back to you to, for an actual uh, award of contract. But we do have a, uh, a plan and a process to get that uh, work done. And I'll let, Jen's had more recent conversations on the seawall, so I'll let you. So uh, we've been working with Ty and Bond, who are the consultants, for the replacement of the seawall. As we've always said from day one, the shoring was a temporary repair. Uh, the wall itself is in serious disrepair. Uh, it needs to be replaced. So we've gone through the design, final design. We met with the Conservation Commission, the Planning Board, this board. Uh, took public input from all those <clears throat> meetings as it related to seating and rails and how those things would all work out. And Ty and Bond is looking to have that ready for bid. Uh, the first week in October. So we'll have actual prices for the reconstructed wall uh, and alternatives uh, by November uh, to hopefully uh, provide an accurate representation of what the cost would be in the 2018 warrant. Um, under vehicle maintenance, um, I gave uh, the manager a memo earlier in the summer, but Unit 82, our older sludge truck has been uh, redlined by the, my, myself taken off the road uh, because the cost to repair this year was a significant frame damage is uh, was uh, 21 533 uh, the most we could ever get for the truck on the open market is about ten thousand uh, dollars same thing with unit 15 it's a pickup truck that's had issues as long as I've been here um, there again the frame is not uh, road worthy it's a, almost an eighteen thousand dollar repair uh, typically, when I trade those type of trucks in for other vehicles, I'm given $2,000 or less uh, as a trade-in value. Uh, the, the, it only has 68,000 miles, but it is a uh, like a year 2,000 truck. So um, being located where we are does uh, wear and tear on these vehicles. Um, as a warning, uh, I did do a summation of all the monies that we've spent on vehicle maintenance year-to-date. 
and we're up around uh, we're in excess of 180,000. The budget line allowance for the, for those vehicles is all three budget lines is only 172, 172,625. Um, I'm still expecting that more is going to need to come out of those lines because we still have to uh, mount all of the snow plows to the to the trucks that we have. Uh, while two of them are new, and thank you for the new trucks. Um, every year I see this one needs a thousand, this one needs 500, this one needs something um, for them to be ready to uh, plow snow all winter long. So th those are the um, the realities. Uh, in part, it's, we are being eaten apart by the uh, solid waste vehicles. Literally, uh, those sidearm packers are. Um, I think a year ago I said, uh, when I was before the board, they used up 33% of our overall budget. Um, we had a, uh, set up money, and I've got it right here. I might as well talk facts rather than fiction. They just, it, it just eats up my budget. But, for instance, highway vehicle maintenance, which is snow plow trucks and everything else, is only at 80,000, and we have 91 in that line. Uh, wastewater treatment plant vehicles, 32,000 in that line. We've only used 12.6, but we have 49,000 in the solid waste line. We've used 88 because not only the trailers, but those sidearm packers are literally eating the budget alive. When one hose goes, you replace it, five others go because you made that one hose stronger, it blows out in five other locations. So the department's getting eaten up on the solid waste trucks, which goes back to why you may see in within our request for warrant articles under vehicle mate re replacement is uh, one of the solid waste trucks. Um, we have to do something or we're going to rebuy these trucks again, just maintenance dollars alone. Um, fourth quarter projects coming up, uh, of course, snow fence on the beach. Uh, we're pulling all the containers off of the, along the beach. Uh, hopefully we didn't get them all after this past weekend. Uh, the boardwalks have already been pulled off the beach and collected, and the highway crew, uh, when they're done with the, uh, assisting in the, the paving operations that are currently going on, will be uh, milling and patching potholes and pavement defects out into November until uh, it gets too cold. Uh, salt spreaders are going to have to be mounted on the truck and, as I say, check for, uh, prepare for the snow removal. Um, the wastewater treatment plant facility study is due this week uh, in final print um, for distribution to this board. Um, I'd like to say that we're going to need another uh, discussion. Uh, where we'll have to be here to answer your questions. It's a, in excess of a 100-page document. It's a very, um, it outlays um, some $41 million worth of improvements that need to occur uh, at the wastewater treatment plant over a number of years in the future. Leaf collection I bring up because this is the time of year people start asking. Um, in the past, it's always been the first week of November. Last year it was delayed a little bit to a vehicle being broken down, but I'll be directing staff to start the leaf collection. It will follow the same collection as the uh, solid waste routes, and that'll be for November 6th. Um, there again, uh, for people that don't know or haven't gone through it before, the leaves have to be bagged. We, we don't do loose collection. And I'll let Jen finish up on Lafayette Road sewer main. Uh, so Lafayette Road sewer main replacement, a much needed project to replace the broken and deteriorated pipes down there has begun. Uh, started last Sunday. We are currently doing some dewatering uh, at the end towards Fast Eddie's uh, across from CVS uh, as that's the deepest part of the construction. Uh, they'll start there. Uh, Jamco has multiple crews in to move this along as fast as possible. So services are connected as we move through uh, with a goal to be done by the middle of November. And then with that, just because we were just talking about uh, the Fast Studies area, we have ordered another blinking pedestrian flashing sign uh, that will be installed basically uh, at the crosswalk from Galley Hatch side. Uh, to Fast Studies, similar to the one that was done up by uh, the hotel and Logan's restaurant across Route 1. 
that will be one of our final sign installations for this year. Questions? <clears throat> Virginia. Um, lots of information. Thank you. Um, so how many people, not including the ones that you only heard about verbally, but do you have leaving or have left public works? Well, it's three. I predicted somewhere around seven, and three have uh, retired already this year. Um, four, Paul would be four. four. Uh, I didn't anticipate Gino's uh, um, moving away. Um, but yeah, there's uh, three to four in the next uh, coming six to seven months. And most of these people, it sounds like, have like 20 years plus experience. Yeah. Yes, they do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The other, the other two, one of them has uh, close to 30 years experience and 10 years experience, but um, age is also kept catching up with them. So you're looking to retire. Okay, and then as far as the recycling, you say we are still on track compared to last year? Yeah, you know, what, what typically happens is I always see a dip in the summer because, you know, basically we really can't get our, our visitors to recycle as, as diligently as our residents do. Right. So that's why I always see a seasonal dip, but okay. uh, it, it'll probably go back up. All right, thank you. Yeah. Are we going to have in the budget for next year some more of the crosswalk signs? <clears throat> the, uh, the, 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 you know, the solar-powered ones? I'm sure we'll find the money because one of the other projects that has to be done uh, and we'll probably end up using the same technology is the, the school zone on Winnicott Road, and those are probably also <clears throat> going to be um, flashing lights. Um, but it'll, they'll have to be a step up in that uh, we'd want to give uh, a controller button to the schools so that they're not flashing, let's say, during Christmas vacation and or spring vacation, things like that. The, uh, the one at Logan's Run gets used quite often. Yeah. Actually, more and more, every time I've gone up by there, you see people mm -hmm. using it. So it's yeah. they are working, and they do slow people down to give the pedestrians a fighting chance. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, thank you. Rick? Um, <clears throat> the... I forgot what I was going to ask. But what about the forty-one million um, for the sewer? Yeah, how many years are you thinking that's going to go over? The, the, all the work when we we first met with them and said, okay, you've get, got it divided into the highest priority, medium priority, and lowest priority, which they did for us, and it comes <coughs> in uh, the summation of about thirteen million, thirteen million, and whatever the remaining is. But of course, that'll go up. Um, what do I envision? If, if we could convince the voters to give us a 10-year note for $13 million, that would, be honest with you, um, kick it right in the, you know, give it a good jump start. Um, I can't see reasonably coming for, I would never ask for all $41 million. I just think it's, um, it would be too big of a nut to ask for the for the residents. But I could see the $13 million or some major portion of that and at a term that is reasonable, that you five people think is, is reasonable <coughs> that the budget can, can withstand or the town's lending and borrowing capability can stand. But initially I would look to, for the $13 million. Mm -hmm. And... Um, what about what were you talking about about the taking in other people's sludge? When you build a regional wastewater treatment facility, um, and the state gives you the design permit, part of the requirements are that you have to design the plant to accept not only sludge from your um, residents, i.e., the out like for instance, all the Muncie Drive; those are all septic systems people on the outer portion of landing, uh, people way out in Rusty's neighborhood. All those people come in, and um, you, you plant has to be sized to handle a certain amount of that. And when you do, you can also handle others. And, and we have an agreement, and you've established the rates as to what other towns or, or other people coming in from other towns, what they would pay. But there is an upper limit as to what we can accept physically within the plant. Um, 
and we've seen we have seen an increase because the Epping facility can no longer accept. They didn't. I don't exactly know why, but they've been cut off from the state from accepting uh, sludge residuals, septic residuals, at their facility. And so part of it comes to us, part of it goes to South Berwick, part of it I'm sure goes to Dover, part of it might from the Epping area might even go up to Manchester. It gets it gets spread around. And it sounds like we have to do something early uh, into the spring season to let people know more about the recycling again. Maybe yeah. get people to have some type of a campaign in the rental units. I know I have a rental unit and they have recycling there. Uh, and it's yep. 23 condominiums and they on every floor have recycling and regular trash. Yep. So I think we have to be more diligent about that. So. Maybe something the department can do is make up flyers that we then, you know, through the rental agencies, hand out. Or it should work out better than what it's working out. I would agree. Thank you, Speed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Director, Deputy Director. Uh, the forty-one million dollars that uh, um, is on the horizon that may or may not be uh, um, a hard number, but I would, I would, uh, I would say that Rusty and I work down there as uh, children. And uh, not much has changed. True. And Rusty is a much younger man than I am, but it, um, he's, it's still been a while. And I would say, and I was going to save it for uh, under old business, but uh, our uh, completely civil and our completely um, uh, governmental pursuit uh, with the tort action that the vote, this, this board voted five to one, uh, with the seven hundred thousand dollars a year, uh, I will ask uh, Director Pulliam on behalf of the board to. Uh, crank out how much of that $700,000 a year that has not been challenged perennially by this town uh, would fund uh, a substantial portion of that um, burden that uh, is imminent in some way, uh, larger, shorter, whatever, but it's coming. The city of Portsmouth has a, a fiasco that's uh, some 70 or $80 million. So again, I would save it for uh, old business, but that's revenue. Uh, and we get to the downsizing or downshifting of uh, this waste effluent. Mm -hmm. And there is no charge. Would you please share uh, uh, your experience with the Speaker of the House, the Minority Leader, uh, the Chief of Staff, and Mr. Welch about uh, 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 value enterprise systems for um, uh, charges for yeah. that effluent and, and what the town of Hampton does now and what uh, what the town of Hudson does. Thank you. Yeah. We're one of the few communities in the state that does not have or does not send out regular sewer bills. Uh, when I resided in Dover as a young man, every quarter I got a water bill, I got a sewer bill. Sewer bills were based upon the percentage of the water that you used. Um, what that you can do with that, and, and it, it, I operated under this in Summersworth, was all the sewer fees and all the water fees that were collected, uh, those bills went to enterprise funds, which were intended to be uh, self-supporting, <coughs> self-sufficient, so that if you knew through a, a plan to study, uh, your facilities plan, which you normally do anywhere from seven to ten years, for a wastewater treatment plant, you'd see these things coming up. And you'd say, okay, the rates have to be adjusted. Uh, it's cheaper for everyone to buy in early rather than wait for us to borrow the money. And th there would be a, 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 uh, an, uh, an incremental increase in the, the sewer rates and or the water rates to offset those projects that need to get done. One, some of them are uh, just to replace aged equipment I'll give you, for instance, all the effluent when it dumps in the plant, there's three huge motors. They're as tall as, as rusty. Um, these are the same pumps that have been there since 1974. Two of them operate constantly, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They have never, some of them have never shut off. Since I've been here, we've taken number two pump, the middle one, out, had it serviced because um, it, uh, the seals started leaking. It actually started uh, losing uh, grease or oils out of the top part. But those are the same pumps that have been in there. That's 
just one, it's amazing that they would last that long. It goes to the quality of what we bought, but there's other plants that have had that those types of things replaced two and three times in the same lifespan. We have not at all. And they're not the only pumps that are in there that are still from this 1974 or 78 or other upgrades. You've got some pretty aged equipment in there. Um, so without um, an enterprise fund, if, if you will, separate tax bills um, just for water and sewer, um, we're left with the only other opportunity is bonding that I can see. Um, reasonably, we do have a uh, we do have a sewer access fee that you've initiated back in May of 2012, but it's only intended to offset those people buying in and using up the plant's capacity that that were never, if you will, taxpayers before, like new condos or new new homes uh, where raw land gets developed. So we, we only have a few choices. Um, if we tried to go to an enterprise fund, it would have to be a uh, revisit how we have a tax structure within the town of Hampton. But um, for people, um, you know, if you owned a laundromat in town, um, it's fantastic. You, you don't pay a sewer bill. That's a great business to have for a municipality like, like in Hampton. Uh, I know some of the sewer bills I sent out for laundromats in, in Summersworth, $40,000 a year. Here they're only paying, you know, whatever their property tax is, covers it. And um, so other, and other businesses, I'm sure, enjoy that same benefit, and it's probably an attractant to Hampton. But I can guide you through that process. Uh, I can work with you on that process, but ultimately how to change our billing structure or tax structure with respect to our sewer utility um, ultimately is the board's decision. Thank you, Director, for sharing that. And I was uh, I was surprised to hear that from the speaker, and uh, I know that you are much more familiar of it. And going forward, I, I think uh, that, uh, that notion, that platform is something that uh, the town of Hampton should investigate. I appreciate that very much. You talk about uh, the um, the drain on your budget with um, uh, the uh, the garbage trucks, um, with uh, those packers, if you will. And again, Rusty and I, and Rusty's a young man, and we go back. and uh, I worked on a leech and worked down there in the summer, and we were again uh, children, uh, 14, 15 years old, working on that. And uh, times haven't changed much, and I know that the hospitality nature and the commercial nature of the beach dictates that uh, there's some uh, stronger involvement uh, from the municipal platform. But I would be interested going into the future and in looking at uh, some real hard analysis of uh, speaking of the west side and speaking of some alternatives when we're talking about a platform that chews up uh, your budget, when we're talking about uh, a platform that takes your manpower away from highway. Uh, and Madam Wolsey has been uh, uh, talking about that for years, that we don't have enough men and women working on the roads and they're on garbage and that is the salient. So I would say based on your uh, brief analysis tonight that uh, the town should be interested in and really taking a hard look at that. And uh, again, when you talk about uh, value enterprises for folks that are, uh, that's a very expensive notion to take all of that trash um, from commercial enterprises. And again, it's the same notion. They're paying uh, a lot of commercial property tax, but so on businesses in other towns. They are. And yeah. so on businesses that are headquartered here that have other branches or other, other operations in other towns. So it's, it's something to look at. Yeah. And a, again, going back to this uh, very civil, uh, very uh, pragmatic and very rational uh, pursuit with a branch of government, with the town of Hampton, uh, seeking to address this $700,000 shortfall. When you talk about uh, having a budget eaten up with public works and yours with your sewage operations is the largest municipal platform in the town, uh, how important to, it is for this municipality to have this conversation uh, with the state uh, in a courtroom. Uh, so I want to thank you for your, your comments tonight, and I look forward to your, your work on the Warren articles, and that will be very interesting. Cool. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you.
I have a couple of questions. Uh, recycling, <coughs> average rate last year you said was 30 percent. Right. Right. And why do we want the recycling up? You want the recycling up because my numbers show, and, and I've worked on this as late as this past June, we're paying about $150 per ton to get rid of trash, but we're only paying about $120 a ton to get rid of recycling because this town benefits from a zero. Uh, uh, we're one of only two communities in the state that pays nothing to get rid of trash. When I say nothing, we, we don't pay a disposal fee. We still have transportation. We still have vehicles that we maintain. So that's why it still does cost $120 a ton. I don't want people to think that it's free-free. Free. It's not. But it is significantly less than trash. trash. And so the more you can throw, you can recycle cardboard, plastics, paper, glass, all those things, it really helps with the budget strongly helps with the budget. And um, Rick already asked the question on, on the septic tanks. Uh, monitoring on Tide Mill Creek, what are we monitoring for? I don't think you've told us that. We, we actually monitor what's known as, the fe it's a fecal count. It's the quality of the water. Um, the reason why we do that is if there was raw effluent coming out of either one of our force mains, that's the first place it's going to show up. Um, so by keeping a track on that, it gives us a great background that, you know, the water's not pristine, it's not Poland Springs water, but at the same time, it's not polluted. And that's why we, it was part of what we agreed to do with the state to keep on top of the situation. And by the way, every several weeks, we are also shutting off each force main and bringing it up to pressure and letting it hold pressure. In other words, to test its uh, structural integrity. integrity. Thank you. That's good. I was going to say capability, but it wasn't that. Um, and so we're, we're staying right on top of that. And, yes. is, and when you said one day, uh, one test, it was 2,419 MPN. It's, uh, that's a fecal count. Just think of it as, as a number uh, per per. The number of bugs we encountered in 100 milliliters of water okay. is really what it stands okay. for. And, and no, no, no reason why, uh, no explanation why that would happen. I mean, that's huge. I mean, is that how much? What percentage do I think? wise is that over what it usually is? What do I think happened? Somebody went to start their RV and um, get it ready for the summer season. And they opened up the silcock in the back, not realizing that it had never been emptied last fall. And it kind of got on the lawn area. It'll just go away. Well, it rained and washed it into the creek. And when it did, it came through as one plug of high count bacteria. Because then the next day, it was gone. If it, it had been a continual leakage of, let's say, a sewer pipe or a main or somebody's septic system, you'd have seen the count stay right up there day after day. It did not. So it was a one-time, somebody lost some effluent. And Lafayette Road. Yes. Sewerage. They figured they'll be finished when? November 17th. November 17th. And what will happen when they're finished? Um, Are you on the road? road I'm road asking. Road, yes, no, I knew you were. That's why I, you know, I took a pause for a second. Uh, basically, everything will be paved. It will not be paved curb to curb. That is something we'll make the decision come spring uh, based on more articles um, that get proposed uh, in the upcoming months. Uh, but everything will be closed and everything will be a smooth surface. They're required to cut it out, similar to what Aquarian did. They took all those humps and bumps, cut them down, and paved. We'll do the same exact thing on uh, the other side of the road. So it'll be, it'll be fairly smooth. It needs smooth. to be smooth for the traveling Travel. public. It also needs to be for smooth plows. for me to plow it. Yeah. Otherwise, I'd be taking some teeth out. Okay. Good. Thank you. Anybody else? I got one thing, actually. On the sewer bill, if we were to investigate and do that, would it be possible to do it for something over usage, over a certain amount of usage? Or is that going to be... It, it, it could be. Um, so, like, for instance, not a regular four-family... Well, for instance, in the solid waste, 
carrier, you can bring up to a thousand pounds to the transfer station at no charge. Right. After a thousand pounds, we start to charge you. Could you do the same thing with wastewater? Yes, you could. Um, on the high volume users, you'd either have to have a way of metering their water usage or get Aquarian to cooperate and send us their water bills okay. to, to do something like that. And it is not uncommon for people who give um, high strength waste to the, um, be it um, too hot, difficult pH, too much BOD, there is rules within our present ordinance that you can enact a surcharge fee on those people. Okay. But that's a very limited group of people. Right. Thank you. Yep. Anything else? I just wanted to say, you know, the electric company charges you more if you use more electricity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you're constantly, when you have a commercial account, every time you get to a certain point you go to another classification and it's a higher rate and i'm not sure when they reduce them I don't, I don't, they never notice <laughs> let you know that they've reduced it but that's something the more instead of the more you use you would think it would be less the more you use it's more expensive yeah. right. thank you thank you, thank you. Chief Ayotte. No. Oh. No. Christy William. Finance Director. <laughs> Monthly Financials. <laughs> We're going to do rock, paper, scissors back then. Okay. So I'm here with um, the August Financials. We got them about a week or so ago in your boxes. Uh, it's the eighth month of 2017, and the target is 66.7%. When you review the attached revenue report, you can see the differences in revenue from 16 to 17. The 2017 revenue is slightly above target at 68.96% and above the 2016 actuals for August. The month's total income was $797,668. Of that total, motor vehicles came in at 342,835, which is over the month's target by 43,893. Uh, the other major contributors to the month's total were interest on taxes at $21,213, building permits at $19,171, highway subsidy at $94,869, State water pollution control at $64,701, departmental income at $83,442, parking lots at $109,287, and the real estate trust at $44,261. On the expense side of things, you will find that we are under budget by $369,425, or 1.5%. In July of 2016, the year-to-date expenses were 368425 or 1.53% under the month's target of 66.7. So you can see that we're running right in line with where we were last year at this time. Um, let's see. Tonight, this month, I'm just going to go over and point out any sections as a whole that are over or under and things, reasons as to why. Under town manager, supplies and expenses is over target at 107.9%. Under election, registration, and vital statistics, there are a few lines over the target, but the section as a whole is still under budget at 65.02%. The same is true with finance. A few lines are over target, but the budget, the section as a whole is at 64.42%. Under management information systems, the new equipment line is at 95.64%. Usually that line is just budgeted for one uh, piece of equipment a year, and they've purchased that, so there shouldn't be too much more spending on that line. Legal expenses is at 201.37%, and the legal department as a whole is now over target at 103.03%. Under cemeteries, the electric line is at 104.33%, and replacement equipment is at 84.3%. Uh, 
Parking administration is over target at 88.45%, but I believe they only have a few concerts left, so they're wrapping up their season in the parking lots. The police department has lines that are over target and the section support services over, but the department as a whole is at 64.4%. Fire department also has lines over target, but the department as a whole is only at 60%. Public works, there are line items over target. The sections that are over target are cleaning and maintenance, snow and ice removal, wastewater treatment administration, transfer station and sewer treatment, the department as a whole is still under target, though, at 65.9%. Under Parks and Rec, there are line items over target, and the section administration is over target at 66.76%. The department as a whole is still under target at 65.47%. Patriotic purposes is at 85.19%. Town beautification is at 73.35%. And on page 17 and 18, you'll see that a lot of the Warren articles have had some significant activity on them. When you get to the special revenue funds, Fund 24, the recreation, has a balance of $152,109. Fund 25, Cable Committee, has a balance of $397,906. Fund 26, for private detail, has a balance of $126,021. The EMS Fund 27 has a balance of $551,229. And the wastewater system development charges, the fees collected in 2017 total 51,886. And the balance in that account is 136,872 with 43,100 being approved um, expenditures from that account. So I would bring that balance down there. And that is what I have for August. Regina. Um, no, great. Thank you for the report. So pretty much on target. Yeah, as I was shit. chuckling with Fred. I go, uh, I think when we did June the year before, we were at a million, at a million this year. Then the next month I was at 500 and something. Now we're down to three. So we've been right in line with uh, 2016, almost exactly. Right. Great. So. Thank you. Mr. Bridal. Excellent report. Thank you. Mr. Griffin. Thank you for your report. As always, very Mr. informative. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Director. Uh, I want to thank you for your uh, uh, data uh, shop to, to Mr. Gerald to come with that, that figure uh, to include uh, the Government Accounting Standard Board's Ruling 45. And uh, I think it's appropriate to uh, applaud Mr. Silberdick, who has done such a magnificent job in managing the uh, town's assets. And of course, his, uh, his stellar performance with that of his uh, trustees uh, benefits the town to a tune of about $700,000 a year. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. And so you say, and, and I'm talking strategically about um, uh, your effort and this uh, very civil effort with the state and a branch of government, the judicial branch that we're going to pursue, is that that $20 million uh, that is provided from the trustees and the land uh, is about $700,000. So you've got an asset base that the town of Hampton owns. So conversely, we have an asset base that produces services that the state benefits from. And the big difference is that our asset base, as we just heard the public works director uh, talk about, we'll hear the firemen talk about uh, asset investment, is that 10% a year our asset base is crumbling uh, to the tune of about $2 million a year. Is that correct? Yes. That is correct. So our asset base is crumbling. Our personnel costs in terms of health insurance, in terms of pay raise, is increasing. So it's a quagmire. And uh, I really do uh, appreciate uh, the, the fine uh, attention and detail in your strategic view and your working uh, with uh, the uh, town manager and uh, the town office to, uh, to address this, uh, um, this matter. And when you talk in these numbers and you actually look at that, it's huge, huge asset-based money, and Mr. Silberta could speak to it. But you're talking about an asset uh, base of $20 million. Ours is depreciating at $2 million a year, and all of our uh, sister efforts that are associated with that in terms of personnel are increasing dramatically, and it's a free ride as, as this board has seen it in a five-to-one vote. Thank you for your great work. Uh, I know we're getting into budget season. There'll be some late nights for you away from your family, and thank you for your service to the town. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I have a question. Yes. Parking lots at 109287 coming in. Mm -hmm. Is that in line? Mm -hmm. uh, are we ahead, behind? 
They're behind. Okay, how much? Um, let me see here. Parking lot in um, in August of about twenty five. 22, 25,000. So not as bad as we were expecting, I don't think. Okay, so not as bad. And that was a, a bit that for an early start to the summer. The yeah. weather wasn't very nice. That's Actually, no, that's what we've had. But I'm sorry, we're about 60. No, we're about almost 80. Sorry, 80. 80? Yeah. About 80,000 behind. Okay. Uh, I was looking at the wrong column. Sorry. We're about 80,000 behind uh, 2016, August of 16. Okay. And do we do we kind of track that, try to figure out whether it's weather related or I mean, are we keeping a pretty good we eye it, on it shows up up ups and downs, Mr. Chairman, depending upon the individual weather during the individual years. This year was very bad in the spring, uh, and the result is, and we've seen this before, the result is those costs are down. Okay. The income is down. But Chrissy yeah. does have she we shared have a couple great, of her schedules. She has very we have great schedules. details oh, yeah. and records About, of how many days that. Um, lots were open every month um we have the weather on all of the sheets yep. um telling you know whether it was sunny or and cloudy the number or one what. question at the chamber of commerce is how much is parking today i don't so know what they it's were an issue yeah i don't know what they were charging in the lots daily i'd have i have that data upstairs but i don't know it off the top of my head but I know that I, I'm in contact with Julie from the chamber. She said that's the number one call they get is how mm. much is parking today. So yeah. people think about it. Yeah, right, right. Before they come. That's right. Uh, legal expenses, 201.37 over. Yes. Right. What kind of figure does that represent? There, let's see. They have um, their section as a whole is a hundred is a hundred at a hundred and three percent, and I don't know. Let's see, general government. General government though that that section as a whole is still just under target at sixty seven point sixteen. So we're just over actually sixty six point seven on the general government. Yeah, right. So we're just slightly over. Okay. General government is now when you talk about waste system development charge. Can you explain yes. what that is exactly? Um, I think Chris was just explaining to the board in regards to it's a fee that is assessed by Public Works, yep. the Public Works Director. Since 2012, I think he said that it went into place. So that money is collected. It's held in a special fund, a special account by the treasurer that earns interest, and it can only be used for certain projects. And whenever they have those projects, they come to the board, get the board's approval, um, and then expend the funds from there. We've paid for a decent amount of projects out of that fund. But it's it only on new properties, right? I believe it's only on new properties or additions, made, yeah. possibly. Yeah. I don't know that. that would be. New lots of origin. Yeah, new lots that of type. origin. Is that yeah. what he said? I was listening, but I guess I didn't retain it enough. Okay. Thank you Jim, very much. One, one quick question. I'm sorry. You, sorry, I thought of it while you were bringing up the uh, parking lots. You know, in that brings up a good discussion about we may want to look at some time of automating our parking lots Definitely. for just like days like yesterday and today. I don't know if they had people there or not, but there was a lot of There pump. was no one there. No there was no. And if, if it's automated, they're still going to be collecting some monies. Uh, you know, I don't think there's a savings to our help for going to automation because we still need people in the lots to make sure that they get picked up, cleaned up. People have questions and stuff like that, but I think as a whole, we might want to start looking at some way to automate it. The auditors would love you. The auditors would love us. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, I just think that it's a it's a good time when we you know we start having that conversation. You know, we have three lots, uh, and that may mm -hmm. prove to be other doing other places also that we do so. Um, we want to make take a look at that at some point in time. I wholeheartedly agree, and I'm actually uh, had some discussions with the town manager and public works. Um, what I really think that we need to get that automated. And it's been brought up here many times before, yeah. and yeah. It's, the time is here. Like this weekend, I mean, they were charging like even if we charge five bucks, you know, I mean that's. Right, because you can you, you know you can change the price of it from here. Yes, right. right. It's not yeah. like you have to have somebody get down there. You can change the price from here. Right. Uh, it can be done by a computer. So, yeah. um, 
you know, I think the, the highest the town ever went was 25 or 20 or 25. I think the, yeah, the, I think the board has a set. Uh, right, but uh, I, and I think that's great. I think that's good. I, I think overcharging people at the beach, you know, um, some of the biggest complaints I had is some of the private lots. And they said, what can you do about it? I said, well, what can we do about you charging for a hamburger? Well, what can we do about you charging for a, a magazine? We I can't. think on the 4th of July they charge 30. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, maybe not. I, 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 I was. Yeah, I think I saw 30. Was it 30? 30. Okay. Because I think there the was something put in place too. that they'd be in line with what the precinct yes. was doing. No, I believe right. that. went to 30 and then the precinct went to 30. And then the so precinct went after? The, yeah, it, after. it didn't work like it was so, supposed to. So. I, I agree with 100%. I think, I mean, I think we ought to have a discussion It'd be a much smarter idea. Yeah. And Absolutely. Is that something the Board of Selectmen can do or is that something that has to go to a Warren article? Is that... It, it's a budgetary constraint, so it's going to have it's to something we could budget or a warrant article. Do in conjunction with the precinct. Why wouldn't they want to do it, too? Yeah, I've actually, well. if I may, I wasn't going to bring this up tonight, but since we're really talking about it right now, I've actually had all the precinct commissioners talk to them about it, and they are definitely in agreement with, I don't know about doing conjunction, but what my idea, which I know it's, I'm still doing research on it, and Christy has actually put some schedules together for me that I'm still looking at as far as, what do we go back, like four or five years? I think we went back five. Five years. 2014, I believe. Which is all the information you're talking about, whether it's sunny, all that, what, how many lots, how many we got leases. And I'm actually talked to uh, Public Works a little bit, and I'm thinking perhaps a warrant article this year for the voters to agree to have a study done for a parking garage down there. A parking garage is never going to happen because it's going to be too expensive. You know, even I've ta we've talked to people, pub private people uh, have been looking at it for years, and it's just far too expensive. A warrant article to get uh, something like uh, what Rusty's talking about is more likely. A, war a, a parking garage just is never going to happen. It's just far too expensive. Yeah. Can we hold that I up? Yeah, but that's okay. But can we hold that off till yeah. it's on the agenda and we're talking yeah, about it rather fine. than bringing it up now? Thank you. Uh, does anybody else have anything else for Christy? Christy, thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a good night. Have a good night. Now we have Chief Ayotte. Waiver of purchasing policy and purchasing procedure. Waivers from 718-3.A, open parentheses 1, close parentheses, semicolon, 718-4.A, 1-A. Dot four and seven eighteen dash dash sixteen for the purchase of the striker power load system for ambulance three. That's a lot. It's a mouthful. That's a lot of uh, yeah. 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 To explain it. Dashes. I would like to explain it. Thank you very much. And this is EMS Officer Nate Daniel. Uh, for those of you who don't know him, um, we have purchased last year. We purchased ambulance one, which is a Ford F four fifty, and we came before you to install a power load system, which is a hydraulic lift system that lifts the stretcher from the ground outside into the back of the ambulance and secures it. The old method of doing so required firefighters to lift, actually physically lift the stretcher, slide it into the back, and then on retrieving the patient would have to take it out, lower the wheels, and then move on. We've had a significant amount of injuries. So with your assistance last year, we installed the power load system and made some modifications to a stretcher that already existed, and we were able to purchase that and install it into the ambulance that we bought last year. We're looking, <coughs> if you recall, on 9-11 um, I was here, and I informed you that Mr. Welch and I have been going forward and we've been looking at replacing Ambulance 3, which is a 2009, and uh, in replacing that, we're going to need another stretcher. The current system in Engine 3 is a manual system, if I'm not mistaken, and it's the last one that r remains, and it's not serviceable beyond it. We won't be able to make modifications. We need to buy a new stretcher. Uh, involved with that entire process is also a new lift system. So we have been in contact with the dealer, Stryker, and they've informed us that on September 30th, they're going for a 3% price increase. They will allow us to lock in at the price currently, which would translate into a total savings of uh, $1,205.40. If we're able to secure a purchase through your grant of the waiver, uh, tomorrow we can make the phone call and state that we will be purchasing it. They lock us in at the price, and we're $1,200 cheaper. Okay, and so what is it? Is this power load system? 
So this is the, the actual lift system that goes in the back of the okay. ambulance, and okay. it's also the new stretcher that would also go along with it. There's two components to that. Um, the, the stretcher that we'd be replacing is 10 years old anyway, and it's very fatigued, as you might imagine, going up and down for 10 years with patients on it. Um, so this would cover both. That's in addition, just so that everybody's clear, that's in addition to the ambulance cost. This is the, the lift and the stretcher system. Okay. This will come out of the EMS account, by the way, which you just heard Christy say is totaled at $551,000 right now. I tell you, $24,000, I know we've spent more than that on, on uh, injury. injuries in the fire department. I've worked with many people that are no longer working now because they blew their backs <laughs> out and stuff like that. I can see it, uh, definitely. Stretches have come a long way, even to the one that's 10 years old, than from what I used to lift. That's and the ones, the ones that are there now are even much better, and I, I wholeheartedly support this. Mr. Bridal, not to, not to change the subject for anything, but just so that you know, the total cost on the cot and on the lift system is forty thousand one hundred and eighty and five cents. So you had said twenty four. I just want to make right. sure that it's all we're all clear and honest here. So, Mr. Griffin. No, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Beam. Uh, I'm waiting for Mr. Bridal's motion. I'll make the motion. Uh, man, nope. man, oh, okay, man. go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Waddell. Mr. Waddell, go ahead. Thank you. So the money for this is coming out of the EMS account. And the EMS account is what? I just like Currently to make sure. Currently at $551,000. No, no. Oh. Where does it come from? So um, if a patient is transported, then what we do is we receive the face sheet, and then we send that out to billing. Comstar is our current billing company. Uh, this is billed through patient's insurance, and in that uh, that payment plan that comes back uh, goes into the enterprise fund. Right. So it's all money that that, that is ge dedicated by towards that EMS and geared towards EMS. That's correct. Right. Okay. What what's that figure again? Five hundred and fifty one. No, the total figure for this new purchase. Yes. It's forty thousand. I'm going to give it to you one hundred percent here. Forty thousand one hundred eighty and five cents. The savings would be one thousand two hundred and five and forty cents. And I just, just if you know, what's the average? Would you say weight of the per people you're putting into the? Well, it certainly does vary. I think that's They're that's not getting any smaller. So it's They're not. <laughs> Recently, we had a, a cardiac arrest, and unfortunately, the patient did not survive. Um, we were told uh, through uh, some communications with the police department that the, um, the the patient that we had been working on was taken by the funeral home. And um, those those guys had had a significant problem removing the patient, and and thereby a couple of guys got hurt. Right. So we don't want to do that. Yeah, I agree. It's a big difference when you're picking up Regina or you're picking up me. Well, what Adam said. I didn't want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we've talked about it. The CDC has said that we're at 37 percent right now that are considered morbidly obese for patients across America, and this is just a you know a snapshot, and it's not it's not getting lower. Yeah. So, you know, we are seeing that. This stretcher is uh, capable of holding 700 pounds. The stretcher lift itself is able to lift 870 pounds, which includes a stretcher weight. Um, for two firefighters or one firefighter to do this with leverage and whatever, you can imagine the injuries that are just waiting wow. to occur. Yeah. yeah. So I'll make a motion to waive the purchasing policy um, and to allow the chief to buy this striker power load system for ambulance three not to exceed forty one thousand dollars second all in favor unanimous thank you, you guys are all set thank you very much right, have a great night thank you, thank you. minutes of september 11th 2017. i'll make that motion okay second. all in favor unanimous Good. town manager's report mr chairman uh I think our public works director and deputy director gave most of my report. But yeah. Just to remind people, we are milling Hardot's Way, Drakeside Road, Merrill Industrial Park, and Woodland Road. And we'll be paving those streets after they are milled. That is, we're cutting the top surface off so we'll have a good bond uh, on, the, on the, lower portion, the, the lower portion of the roadway. And then once that's finished, we're going to be going around and completing the roadway shoulders to be shimmed up and adjusted so that they're level with the edge of the road so there's no problem running off the road and getting your wheel caught or something of that nature. Uh, the work crews on, on Hot Odds Way, we had originally sent out notices saying that uh, it looked like we were going to have to use Tide Mill Road as a detour when they started milling up the roadway. We were able to work it so that we didn't have to do that. So as, as of right now, I do not believe we're going to be using Tide Mill Road as a detour unless something goes radically wrong. 
That's it, sir. Good. Good. Nice. No questions. Thank you. Trustee. Nope. Rick. No. Thank you. No. Negative, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, sir. No questions. No. <laughs> All right. Old business. I do have one thing, so I think I might have brought oh. it up one time before. Um, town manager's office is currently working on a letter that is going to be addressed to yes. all uh, business owners who pay rooms and meals tax, and it's going to be totally anonymous, totally optional. You, I would prefer that everyone that was willing would participate in it, but if not, I understand. Um, and it's going to be sent out, and it's simply going to be a blank line on there where you can write a number, and the number that we are looking for is the total rooms and meals tax paid from July 1st, 2016 through June 30th, 2017. This will all be outlined in the letter, which Christina is still working on. Um, the tax assessor has gotten us a detailed list of all the addresses from the state that pay rooms and meals tax. And the reason, the goal of this is to determine the town's percentage of total rooms and meals tax paid in the entire state of New Hampshire. So anyone watching this or anyone who knows someone who has a business that pays rooms and meals tax, we would appreciate if uh, you participated in this uh, for us. Thank you. Thank you. Old I business. just wanted to say that today, uh, when I rode through the beach, the place was teeming, and it was teeming with old people. They were <laughs> everywhere. There weren't any young people. That's good. And it made me wonder where they all came from, actually, if they're local people or whatever. Maybe it's people that come because they're expected to be a little bit less money or whatever. But it were, there, and a lot of them actually had their grandchildren, it looked like to me. Excellent. So it was kind of interesting. Don't you mean mature people? Yeah, yes. it made me feel younger, and I'm probably older than them. I don't know. <laughs> All right, new business. Uh, let me oh. let me get to some old business, Mr. Sorry. Chairman. And uh, if anybody saw me swimming at the beach, I was one of the young people, um, soon to turn age sixty. Uh, and I live on One Account Road. That's where the, that's where I came from, Rick. So um, uh, we we did uh, we did a uh, a discussion, and Mark has been working very hard on the Coakley Landfill Group. And uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may, uh, there's the document, the Coakley Landfill Group Participation Agreement, and it's dated from 25 years ago, 26 years ago now, this month. Yeah. And uh, I've, I've reviewed it extensively. As you know, I serve on the uh, Seacoast Cancer Cluster Commission. And uh, this is an important document. I will move after a, a brief review for the public, which may not have the time to uh, read it, um, and then uh, motion that it, uh, and move that it be uh, placed on our website. But it's, uh, it's a very secretive document. Uh, we have addressed uh, and sent a unanimous letter, and it will show in this to, uh, I think, the layman, uh, a, a, a very blatant conflict of interest. But it's, it's uh, certainly Bolshevik, if not Menshevik, and it, uh, um, it, uh, it really is an alarming document. It is uh, extensive, and uh, there is a, uh, uh, a proclivity to talk about uh, uh, protective and secret issues, um, but there's none that's talking about the end state of remediation, of testing, of the pollution threat, and I'm just going to go through a couple of minutes of it, and then uh, make that motion to put it on the uh, the website. And I thank you for your your time and your your uh, patience on this. And again, this is a, uh, a dated September 1991. It's 26 years old, and this establishes basically a very private company, a very private organization with uh, very little transparency and very little ability for folks to look inside it. And I'm reading directly from the uh, the uh, document itself, and. Uh, it, each member, and this is uh, in paragraph three, each member and any individual ser serving on behalf agrees by virtue to maintain the privileged, na privileged nature and confidentiality of all communications and proceedings of such committees and subcommittees. It goes on to 3.3, paragraph 3.3. Meetings of the group may be called for any purpose at the time by the city of Portsmouth, and we'll get to the city attorney's uh, signature on these documents that, that we assert has a conflict of interest. Uh, the executive member, uh, the executive uh, committee members, um, of which Mr. Sullivan is one, uh, there are three members. There's the municipal class, the generator class, and transp transporter class. Um, they have the authority to enter in con into contracts on behalf of the group as approved by the executive committee. Um, 
they can uh, get separate counsel under this document. And they may request common counsel, but they can get their own attorneys. This document has 25 attorneys, at least two dozen attorneys that are signing on to it. In terms of voting, and Mr. Sullivan is the, uh, um, the chief, uh, if you will, on this, the executive <coughs> member, um, she'll be decided by a majority vote of the executive committee, which Mr. Sullivan runs. Mr. Sullivan has two votes uh, per this document. Um, and under paragraph C, 4-6C, <coughs> any member of the executive committee may assign its vote to another member of the executive committee to vote at the meeting using the form or substantially similar form referred to in paragraph 3-6. So does Mr. Sullivan with his two votes sometimes get three votes if somebody would authorize him to make that, uh, that vote while he's serving as the uh, city uh, Portsmouth's attorney. Uh, initial payment. Uh, we'll get to that. The uh, Fortune 100, the Fortune 500 companies that have liability that polluted this site that uh, um, <coughs> basically walked away uh, from this and now we're facing what we know what um, uh, Selectman Barnes and we're all t tasked with is this uncertainty of this carcinogenic plume that comes this way. Um, we go on, the municipal members may contribute in-kind services in lieu of the contribution towards shared cost. So uh, is the city attorney uh, reducing the Portsmouth's liability by this in-shared cost? And you'll see a, a rather stark and startling uh, offer to do in-kind services uh, from a firm that is a responsible party, and I'll get to that. Uh, and these are questions that are unanswered that certainly do not rise to the uh, standard of impartiality uh, and uh, fairness and transparency. Uh, paragraph 8, there is a waiver in this document of the conflict of interest. Uh, unbelievable in a government entity that there is actually written into this a waiver from the contract from these members for a conflict of interest. So uh, I've never seen that in government and I've got uh, soon to be 40 years straight of service to the government sworn to the uh, Constitution of the United States uh, and I've never seen that. That's paragraph 8. Uh, confidentiality further buttons down uh, the uh, secrecy that this organization is shrouded in. Uh, it says that this agreement shall be held in strict confidence by the receiving member and all persons to whom, to whom confidential information is revealed by the receiving member. Furthermore, it goes on, if, further, if such information becomes the subject of an administrative or judicial order requiring disclosure, so there you have it, is that you must seek legal counsel, and perhaps we may go down that road in the future to open this up, is to um, uh, protect the interests of Hampton and find out exactly what's going on with this uh, very tight-knit, shall we say, group. Uh, the confidentiality obligations of the members shall remain in full force and effect without regard to whether the actions arising out of the site are terminated by final judgment and shall, shall survive the termination of this agreement. So they say this, this confidentiality goes on forever. This document's 26 years old, and it's still the operating document, unless there's been some significant amendments uh, or endorsements to it. And I see Mr. Welch shaking his head. He's uh, got 50 years of municipal experience, uh, and I, I think he knows uh, some of the threats this imposes. Paragraph 9-4 talks about the New Hampshire right to, to no law. Um, I'm sure they want to clamp down on that, and I think that's something that the sport ought to have to review with this document in consultation with our, our town council, take a look at uh, in terms of exploiting information. And uh, the list goes on and on. There is a covenant in here not to sue. They've got myriad parties, uh, personable, responsible parties. They've got municipalities. They've got three municipalities. They've got transporters. They can't sue each other. So they can't, uh, uh, they can't talk about it. They can't sue each other. And uh, in perpetuity, this agreement and their findings and their records are private. Uh, standard legal contracted uh, that, that, that we often see, but on steroids. Uh, and it's un-American. It uh, doesn't meet the standards of the great state of New Hampshire. Uh, and it certainly is uh, just rife with conflict of interest. It's embedded into this document. It's embedded into this process. Uh, and it's institutionalized in this process. Uh, the generator members, and if you look at the, the list here, Booth Fisheries, Erie Scientific, GTE Products, Kmart, Mobile Oil, Montgomery Ward, Northern Utilities, Public Service, United Technologies, Waste Management. These are huge 
huge, some of them international, international corporations, uh, and we scramble, and we can't get testing, and we have uncertainty, we're closing down wells. Uh, it's just an unbelievably low standard, and the most, uh, the most horrific thing I've seen uh, in 40 years of government uh, that, that we have to confront. The municipal members, for the record on this, per the document of the city of Portsmouth, the town of Northampton, and the town of Newington. It has percentages laid out here. Uh, the city of Portsmouth has the lion's share with Northampton and the town of Newington with much, much less. Uh, In-kind services, and again, we would ask uh, what the city of Portsmouth, specifically through Attorney Sullivan that asserts he has no uh, claim of uh, uh, conflict of interest uh, under in-kind services, administrative and support services with respect to the performance of the work. Number nine, administrative and support services with respect to the operation of the trust. Remember, he is the executive uh, on the executive committee. He has more than one vote, and he is the city attorney in Portsmouth. He was in 1991 when this document was signed. He is the city attorney now. And this is nothing personal. This is a co legal contract. This is factual. If you could just bear with me a couple more minutes, uh, Selectman Barnes and gentlemen, Mr. Welch, that would be fine. The EPA is involved with this, principal responsible parties. Uh, the, the, the driving uh, force of this document is not the science, it's not the pollution, it's the cost and mitigating cost. There is a September 27, 1991 letter to the, from the city of Portsmouth and it's the Coakley Partic Participation Agreement, and it goes to the uh, law firm, and it's signed by Robert P. Sullivan, the city attorney. And again, he's on the executive committee, and I'll keep on saying that because it's a blatant conflict of interest. Please find the enclosed signature page of the consent degree executed by the city of Portsmouth. So he sends it to a law firm that sends it to the committee that he chairs. On September 27th, dear Mr. Kurt, Ms. Katri, again, please find the enclosures, and he's got more verbiage, again, the city of Portsmouth and his signature. Moreover on that, the undersigned party enters in, into this consent decree in the matter of the United States versus the city of Portsmouth. Now, he's the town attorney. He's the city attorney in Portsmouth and all relating to the Coakley Landfill Superfund site. It's signed by the town manager. And then underneath... It says, the agent authorized to accept service on behalf of the above signed party, Robert P. Sullivan, city attorney, Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Down below, there's an asterisk on that, that that city manager's signature is not valid unless it's gone to the city council. And I would assure you, and I would probably guarantee that there were myriad and dozens of non-public sessions with a town, of attorney, town attorney in Portsmouth, and we all know we go into non-public, but nothing ever like this. And he exercises two votes, maybe three, and he is asserting that there is no conflict of interest. But he was to receive the summons as the city attorney in Portsmouth. Again, Robert Sullivan on the uh, another page, same thing, 1991, September 27th. Kenneth R. Mahoney is the town manager, designated representative for receipt of notice and invoices, Robert P. Sullivan, city attorney, Portsmouth Municipal Conto uh, Complex. So it goes on, it's alarming, and then you've got uh, information from, please understand that the proposal for a multi-million dollar rebate was a total shock to the PRP, personal responsible parties. This is horse trading about price. This is horse trading about the lowest monetary outlay, and it's strictly financial. There's nothing about science. There's nothing about the threat. There's nothing about the pollution. There's nothing about the carcinogen here. It's a bunch of lawyers. And it's a bunch of people wearing two hats, and Hampton now is in the dark, and there's a cloud, and there's a plume, and it may very well be coming from the Coakley. This goes back 26 years. Please understand that the proposal of a multi-million dollar rebate was a total, total shock to the PRPs. Again, the fix, the fix, the concentration is on the money. On the issue of the interest, the private PRPs have already come more than halfway by agreeing to a substantial rebate and by agreeing to further pay some interest. Again, more horse trading, nothing about pollution, nothing about an end state, nothing about curing this malady. It is neither fair nor responsible for the federal responsible parties to ask the private PRPs to yield on the changes in terms of the deal in the first place. 
uh, they're basically uh, sending back letters back and forth and trying to dodge the bullet. Virtually all of the federal PRPs demands in the interest of a settlement, in the fairness we should not be asked to make further concessions. These aren't concessions on performance of work. These aren't concessions on matters of science. These aren't concessions on the health of the public. These aren't concessions about uh, people's health and welfare, children drinking carcinage, carcinogens. These are, some of these are Fortune 100 corporations and attorneys dodging responsibility. And I speak to this as a selectman in the town of Hampton. I've got Jetline in a letter dated 27 September 1991. They are a responsible party. We talked about reducing their encumbrance, if you will, of their obligation. This letter is dated to the chain, if you will. In addition, the, the nine, Jetline would like to have the option, and many messengers are going to get a kick out of this one, would like the option of providing, among others, the following services. Now, they're a responsible party. Okay? This is where the inmates are in charge of the prison. Okay? Stand by for this one, because this will blow your mind. Would, would like to uh, the option of providing, among others, the following services. Sampling and chemical analysis. Now, they're a responsible party, and they would like to take over that responsibility. Waste disposal services, design and construction of the remedial action, and on-site safety. So that sums it up, Mr. Chairman. I would move that, uh, unfortunately, at this late date in, in 19, uh, 2017, 26 years later, I would move that the Coakley Landfill Group Participation Agreement, and I have consulted with a town attorney on this, dated 27 September 1991, be posted on our document section on the town website. Second. Is, is that a public document? Oh, it's a public document. And, I and just Mark read it. said, I mean, I'm just, I'm just asking, just from the legal point of view. And Mark said that it, that it would be legal it's a for us. Document. And Mark said it was legal. Mark, Mark even questioned if we needed to have a motion to put it on the website. Okay. Second motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay. Anything else on that? No. And thank you, Mr. Chairman. New, bit, new business. Establish school zone 20 miles per hour landing road from Park Avenue to its terminus at Winniconnet High School, Cuss Lane from Park Avenue to Landing Road. That constitutes that little triangle behind his found his park and yep. with the um, exception of Park Ave. With the exception of Park Ave, correct. Uh, and it, it, it also brings Landing Road down to its end as a Class 5 highway before it reaches the fields down and back. I'll make that motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Good. Closing comments? Motion 2030. To adjourn. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you.